Rigor, British English or rigor, American English, see spelling differences, describes a condition of stiffness or strictness. Rigor frequently refers to a process of adhering absolutely to certain constraints or the practice of maintaining strict consistency with certain predefined parameters. These constraints may be environmentally imposed, such as the rigors of famine logically imposed, such as mathematical proofs which must maintain consistent answers, or socially imposed, such as the process of defining ethics and law. Etymology Rigor comes to English through Old French 13th c, modern French rigueur meaning «stiffness» which itself is based on the Latin rigorum nominative rigor, numbness, stiffness, hardness, firmness, roughness, rudeness, from the verb rigere, to be stiff. The noun was frequently used to describe a condition of strictness or stiffness, which arises from a situation or constraint either chosen or experienced passively. For example, the title of the book Theologia Moralis Inter Rigorum A Laxitatum Medi roughly translates as, "...mediating theological morality between rigor and laxness". The book details, for the clergy, situations in which they are obligated to follow church law exactly, and in which situations they can be more forgiving yet still considered moral. Rigor mortis translates directly as the stiffness rigor of death mortis, again describing a condition which arises from a certain constraint death. <laughs> <laughs> Intellectual rigor Intellectual rigor is a process of thought which is consistent, does not contain self-contradiction, and takes into account the entire scope of available knowledge on the topic. It actively avoids logical fallacy. Furthermore, it requires a skeptical assessment of the available knowledge. If a topic or case is dealt with in a rigorous way, it means that it is dealt with in a comprehensive, thorough and complete way, leaving no room for inconsistencies. Scholarly method describes the different approaches or methods which may be taken to apply intellectual rigor on an institutional level to ensure the quality of information published. An example of intellectual rigor assisted by a methodical approach is the scientific method, in which a person will produce a hypothesis based on what they believe to be true, then construct experiments in order to prove that hypothesis wrong. This method, when followed correctly, helps to prevent against circular reasoning and other fallacies which frequently plague conclusions within academia. Other disciplines, such as philosophy and mathematics, employ their own structures to ensure intellectual rigor. Each method requires close attention to criteria for logical consistency, as well as to all relevant evidence and possible differences of interpretation. At an institutional level, peer review is used to validate intellectual rigor. Intellectual honesty Intellectual rigor is a subset of intellectual honesty—a practice of thought in which one's convictions are kept in proportion to valid evidence. Intellectual honesty is an unbiased approach to the acquisition, analysis, and transmission of ideas. A person is being intellectually honest when he or she, knowing the truth, states that truth, regardless of outside social, environmental pressures. It is possible to doubt whether complete intellectual honesty exists—on the grounds that no one can entirely master his or her own presuppositions—without doubting that certain kinds of intellectual rigor are potentially available. The distinction certainly matters greatly in debate, if one wishes to say that an argument is flawed in its premises. <laughs> Politics and law The setting for intellectual rigor does tend to assume a principled position from which to advance or argue. An opportunistic tendency to use any argument at hand is not very rigorous, although very common in politics, for example. 
arguing one way one day, and another later, can be defended by casuistry, i.e. by saying the cases are different. In the legal context, for practical purposes, the facts of cases do always differ. Case law can therefore be at odds with a principled approach, and intellectual rigor can seem to be defeated. This defines a judge's problem with uncodified law. Codified law poses a different problem, of interpretation and adaptation of definite principles without losing the point, here applying the letter of the law, with all due rigor, may on occasion seem to undermine the principled approach. In specific disciplines Mathematical rigor can refer both to rigorous methods of mathematical proof and to rigorous methods of mathematical practice thus relating to other interpretations of rigor. Mathematical proof <inaudible> <inaudible> 